Hi hey everybody, wanted to have a quick uh, video lecture on productivity and professional practice here as we begin the semester and look at ways in which we can continuously improve our teaching practices and just keep working uh, just to get better. So the three questions that we're going to ask or really talk about here uh, in this specific video lecture, how can basic software tools be used to facilitate print-based communication? What types of planning and scheduling can be aided with the use of technology? And lastly, what specific purpose software aids teacher productivity? So we look at productivity in classroom administration. We think about ways to be able to communicate not just with our students, but also with our peers and also with maybe parents as well of our of our students. So there's different softwares and technologies that can do this. For instance, Google Hangout, Zoom, even as a technology we'll take a look at here in a second called Remind. Planning is a great way to do this. Uh, in terms of like things like Google Calendar, we'll look more a little bit at that moving forward. Scheduling, generating materials, and then lastly, professional development. We'll look at these five items now. So communicating, again, student contact information. Remind is a fantastic tool and app if you have not used this. This is a way you can con maintain contact with your students outside of school hours by setting up a text message based system. Uh, the students will never actually get your phone number, but they can communicate with you via text message. And what's nice as the teacher, you can go ahead and you can shut off your phone in terms of office hours on your uh, Remind app. So students can't contact you after, for instance, four o'clock or five o'clock, whatever timeline you set up there. And also it sends out reminders for students about upcoming assignments. And if parents are subscribed, they would also get the same exact uh, communications as your students would. Letters, blogging is another great example of this. Maybe you don't want to send out letters anymore, but you could do online newsletters, or maybe you have, like I mentioned, a blog that you send out that you blast out every week or maybe once a month to let parents know, once a quarter even, to let parents know what's going on. And then lastly, lastly here, uh, communicating via official correspondence. So Google, Gmail, maybe your school uses Outlook, Mail, different ways to go about doing that, not just, again, with students, but also with your peers. That netiquette comes in to play here in terms of knowing how to write emails and even working with your students and teaching them how and showing them how to specifically write emails that are appropriate when, when speaking with, to, for instance, a teacher. Planning, this is helping you also with, for instance, individual student needs. You can organize materials. I love Google Drive because I have all of my materials completely accessible at any time on my computer. This helps you organize and set things. You can go and do searches, for instance, within your Google Drive or create folders to help you organize things. Lesson planning. It makes it very easy to find and just keep, again, everything organized. You can share it with your students' items. You can share, uh, for instance, assignments you have with them or rubrics. Uh, you can also go, maybe you're doing some cross-curricular design with an English teacher in social studies or math and science, for instance, or different elementary grade levels. This is a great way to go about doing that. And also allows you to kind of play around with things like attendance and have that saved in one spot and then figure out new ways to lay out your classroom. So play around with some designs, to get rid of that kind of factory style seating. Scheduling, this is great for A, personal use, but also B, whether you're affiliated with any club or organization on campus and your students themselves. So this can work as a pacing guide. So you know, okay, I have X amount of weeks in the school year. Here's the content I need to cover. You can kind of break that down, go into Google Calendar and set up timelines or timeframes within there, which things are going to be accomplished. Also, if you know there's going to be a half day or an in-service day, or you're going to be out, you can go ahead and drop that into your calendar to help planning and pacing as well. You can do, for instance, other things if you're keeping track of uh, field trips, make, putting in due dates for students to be able to recognize that. If you have a classroom calendar, or excuse me, a classroom website, you can put a embed a Google Calendar right in there to keep your students on task as well. If you are involved in an organization, for instance, I was a faculty advisor for Model United Nations, MUN. We had calendar, a, a MUN calendar that kept track of upcoming events, due dates for payments, etc. And then if you do bring in guest speakers, this is a great way to keep that organized as well. Just kind of keep you on task. And again, it's nice because you can set in, for instance, you can set inside of Google Calendar notifications to remind you about things that are coming up that day or an hour before or a week before. And it really helps you just maintain that schedule and give you something to look forward to to stay on track. In terms of generating, you have a lot of resources for productivity and professional practice. Just looking specifically, we'll look at the four right here, Google 
you know, you can create documents to share with your students for assignments for your students to do for collaborative projects for your students in terms of looking at, you know, recording sheets, taking down grades, monitoring student behavior, things of that nature. You can utilize Google Forms to create tests, create exams, create polls and opinion polls and things of that nature in your class or teacher evaluations is a great way to do this. Assessments, touched on that a little bit earlier. There's other uh, softwares like Socrative is very, very good for doing tests. Kahoot is a lot of fun for assessments. And then creating hyperdocs. So creating these documents that are your students can actually go and interact with. Another one on here is Google Sites. You can generate a course or class website or a teacher website if you would like to do that, or a club or organization website. You can do that all right in Google as well, that generating aspect for you and really also for your students. PD or professional development, a lot of times your school district where you're working will provide that for you. But if not, it really is a great opportunity to get out and attend some conferences if you can to develop a networking system outside of the K-12 district that you're in, joining some professional organizations. A lot of them are very inexpensive, 40, 30, 40, 50 bucks, 60 bucks for a year. Uh, Ohio Council for Social Studies, there's a few others we're gonna look at here in a moment. And a lot of times these opportunities for, for instance, funding a grant for maybe something you wanna do in your classroom or maybe school district wide, this is a great way, again, to network, but also stand out and bring in some money for funding opportunities, maybe a PD opportunity there as well. And a lot of these conferences and organizations offer PD either at the conference or a lot of times they'll have webinars, things like that, where you can go and get PD for either really cheap or a lot of times it's just free. Talked about collegial communication. Here's some websites for you, just forums and teacher forums and places where you can go just to communicate with people that are going through the same things that you are and have the same, a lot of times the same questions that maybe you do or are looking for the same type of resources. So go here and really take time to explore these websites. You can access this presentation in Blackboard so you can actually go in and find these links in there. And then professional organizations, myself, uh, National Council of Social Studies, part of that. I presented at their conference. Ohio Middle Level Association is another good one. You have other ones like ISTE right here, International Society for Technology and Education. That's a great one. A little expensive, but, but very good organization. National Council for Teachers of English, and it goes on and on and on. And so three things to think about. Number one, you have international organizations like the IRA right here, the International Reading Association. You have your national like I touched on earlier, National Council of Social Studies. And then you also have your state or region. So for instance, OMLA, the Ohio Middle Level Association, or the Ohio Council of Teacher of Mathematics. So there's all of these different organizations that you can utilize to your advantage to gain just more professional experience and ideas to utilize in the classroom. And the last item to touch on is just funding opportunities. Again, please access this in, the, uh, in Blackboard. It's a really fantastic tool. Uh, these are all different ways for you to get grants. National Endowment for the Humanities actually a lot of times provides, uh, this summer maybe not a good idea with everything going on with coronavirus, but they provide grants and stipends for teachers to go and take educational trips over the summer for like a week. Some of them are up to two or three weeks uh, all over the U.S. And they're really fantastic and they give you tons of great tools and resources to utilize in your teaching. So to conclude, thanks for watching and hopefully you found some Tip, tips and, and some tricks in this presentation that allow you to enhance your productivity and professional practice in your career.